Hello and welcome back to the round table. Marco is with me again and we continue this now. Continue this nonsense. <clears throat> I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? Okay, this can actually have an impact, so think about what you're doing. Hmm. Well, I suppose it's completely unrelated to the case, but at the same time, I'm wondering if it would actually reveal anything about the case. Well, then, there you go. Make your decision. Uh. Gee, I'll. I'll put my faith in you, Mr. Butts, this time. Might be better not to get involved in this one. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, no way! That's cheating, she dog! I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah, and when I met her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused. Well. What? I believe the accused's the accused's motive is clearly too clear to everyone, and I can't speak properly right now. <laughs> yes, your voice is quite trembling. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh oh, he went. What do I do? <laughs> uh, honestly, I know. I'll send him a signal. <laughs> Tell the truth. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Oh, dear. Your Honor, the defendant is lying, and this is the reason why I gave him this voice. Well, lying? Prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring bring Mr. Frank saw, saw it to the stand. Very subtle. Mm-hmm. I actually never got that in the German version of the game, that it was such a name. Mr. Soid, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Um, wait, wh what voice did I give him? Fuck! You're giving a pretty regular voice. Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes! I No, I didn't give him a regular voice, did I? It was a more sinister one, but it sounds a lot like pains. Yes, just not over the top is what I mean. It wasn't? Oh, okay, well, uh, maybe. Oh, God damn it! I well, let's just... Mr. Sart, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Wait, it was a more normally voice, right? Yeah, it was sinister, but pulled back. Which has it on him? Something like that. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. 
I thought he must be in a hurry, because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. And I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to be working during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? Oh, boy. oh, I love this music so much. It's so great. <laughs> Things it's... are getting tense. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Dwight, right. this is it. The real deal. Oh, boy. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies and the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Oh, yeah, uh, there was something I wanted to point out. Um, oh, what was it? About that he says, hmm, cross-examination, what is that? We never learned that in lawyer school. <laughs> yes. That is so I'm weird. Not a, I'm a lawyer, not a cross-examiner, jeez. <laughs> Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Was your client really guilty? <gasps> How do I prove this? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradiction evidence, contradicting evidence, I mean, Present it and rub it in the witness's face. Not literally, right though. Face. But what if I want to? Well, that would be assault. Okay, then. I'll trust you on that. I'm a lawyer, not an assaulter. Um, okay. Open the court record with the tab, then point out contradictions in the testimony. And no, okay. this is not an RPG. Jeez, I know this one. It's this button. Let's see. The time of death. It seems to have occurred during the blackout. Mm -hmm. See, the finger is rather heavy. I write home from Paris the day before the murder. Oh yeah, you can also press the shift button, R shift, and then you can see the profiles of every person. Chief Attorney at Fay & Co. My boss and a very good defense attorney. The defendant in this case, a likable guy who has been my friend since grade school. Since Stone, the victim in this case, a model, she lived in an apartment by herself. The prosecutor, for or this case, lacks presence, generally bad at getting his points across. <laughs> yeah, he surely doesn't have any kind of presence. Discovered a Mrs. Stone's body, newspaper salesman who saw Larry flee the scene. I'm not sure 
if that is relevant, the profiles at some point. I'm not sure if it became a thing in later games anymore. It's, it's been years since I played this again. Or I mean, since I played this, so yeah. Okay, yeah. alright, we can go out of here now, unless you... No, we can go out for now. You yes. saw the... I know that you saw the things that you needed to see, and now we go to the cross-examination. South from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Victor Perry arrived from Paris. Do you have already an idea what could be the most likely contradicting one? Not yet, really. Okay, then let's just go on. Cross-examination. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Hmm. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. And I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead! <laughs> I quailed in fright and felt myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. I think I don't need to read this again because I already did the testimony thing, so this is for you, mostly. I mean, this would seem to contradict things. What does it contradict? I quailed in fright and felt myself unable to go inside. He didn't go in. He did go inside for the phone. Yeah, but you only know that because of the one scene, and do you have any evidence that proves that he wasn't inside? Uh, let's see here. Yeah. I mean, you can press X and... No, wait. So, you didn't touch... Oh, that's what? you. Sorry. So, stealing my thunder, man. <laughs> you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes. I mean, no, nothing. Okay, what happened next? Okay, this is, yeah, thought to call the police immediately phone apartment wasn't working okay so can i do it now then the phone in her apartment wasn't working yes i mean no no it wasn't right but you said you didn't go into the apartment or did you oh oh then i can explain that uh that's not the right voice <laughs> there was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entrance way I reached inside and tried using that to call. Oh, I changed his voice so much. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Yep, nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. See, and 1 p.m. Would that be the contradiction? Let's I have see. to figure that out. Where is it? What does it contradict? Start from... Well, the blackout, but that was only in her building, I guess. Yeah, that's but... noon to 6 p.m. And he said he heard... He... And he said 1 p.m. is when the murder happened. Mm hmm... Manuel was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. <clears throat> That's all of it. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Examine the court record with tab if something strikes you as being suspicious. <sighs> I mean, I know what it is, but I don't want to tell you because you have to figure it out. Yes, yeah, so I'm focused on the time of death and the blackout. That seems the more obvious, but unless I'm missing something about the cause. Hmm. I do think you are on the right track, but now you just have to find how it contradicts. From noon's 
But wouldn't noon be... Before? Noon is 12, yeah. Yeah, so 1 p.m. would be within that. Yeah, that's definitely within that time frame. Well, I might as well try. Let's see. I can already say that that is not it. I mean, we just said it was in the time frame, so it can't be that. And you might well, consider then. saving before you do anything. If it's oh, even shit. possible right now. Oh, maybe should do this on the next episode? Or has that much time gone? Yeah, well, first you have to find the contradiction. <laughs> hmm. I want you to find the contradiction first. So. Certainly. Use the old gray lobes to think of this. See. Then find the evidence that contradicts the, his testimony and present it to the court. Mm -hmm. Going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Let's see. Okay, so. Time of death was around that time and he went no wait so she died at around that time mm -hmm. so yet he was at the phone by 1 p.m. before she died so. <laughs> I don't know if I want to leave you hanging or not well we'll see here Coiled in fright. Oh, this is and fun to see someone figure this out. Uh, here and present. Objection. Found about at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. <laughs> Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? This <laughs> Oh, that? Uh, uh... This is trivial! The witness merely forgot the time! Mm -mm -mm. After this testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, gee, that's a really good question. I love this music, this da 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 da. Then, you, every time you get that music, you know, you got them now. <laughs> <You're> triumphant. <laughs> Great job, White. Way to put him on the spot. Put him in his place. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always get, always beget more lies. See through one, and the whole story falls apart. Just like this episode right now. Okay, we are ending it at this point. I hope you had fun so far, and we will continue this next time. Stay tuned for more. Bye-bye.